Hello and welcome to the first part of this tutorial series on how to make a Brick Breaker game in Greenfoot. Um, I'm going to take it from the top in this one. This is meant for beginners and so if you have a little bit of previous knowledge you may want to skip ahead but uh, I wanted to start by explaining exactly what it is we're doing in Greenfoot, what a scenario is, that kind of stuff. So notice when I click on a blank Greenfoot window I get the scenario option up here. In Greenfoot, what we make, we don't make, you know, in Word you make doc files, um, you know, in, in movie programs you make MP4s. Um, in Greenfoot, we're going to make a scenario. Now, be careful right away, and for the purposes of what we're doing, don't click on New Stride Scenario. We're going to make a new Java scenario because we want to write Java code. So, I'm going to type um, Brick Breaker. And I'm going to call it Brick Breaker Tutorial for me. You can call it whatever you like on your end. And note where your files go. So for me, a folder is going to be created on my desktop called Brick Breaker Tutorial. And that will come in handy later when I want to add different images and sounds. So I hit OK. And then what you'll see is the screen will change and you get what kind of looks like a blank canvas here. And that's that's you know kind of what we're doing. Um, if we were an artist, we'd be painting on a canvas. and you know, we are a computer artist in this case, and this is going to be what's called our stage, and we are going to add actors to the stage. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is just show you into show you the My World code. So if I click on this right here, not this right here, this is what we call the super class, and both world and actor are not meant to be edited. So if I double click on this, it's not going to take me anywhere. I want to double click on the my world because this is the world that I'm dealing with right now. So the world is kind of like the stage, uh, what it looks like, how it behaves, that kind of stuff. And if I, I'll show you what I mean. If I double click on my world, go in here, um, this is your first look at code. And everything you see here in blue with the, the slash and the stars here, this is called a comment. And this has no bearing on the code. This is just meant for you to put your name and the title and the date and all that kind of information. And so you can kind of ignore that. And the same goes for this right here. The only thing we need to focus on is just right in here. So whatever code is in here is what's going to happen when the world is created. That's why this is called a constructor. So this here is called the constructor of the world. And this line right here creates the stage. And notice the stage, if we look at it here, um, it's a little bit wider than it is tall. So the stage is 600 pixels wide by 400 pixels tall. That's what these numbers mean. So this is the, the width of the, the stage and, or the world, and this is the height. So if I were to change these, which I I'm not, don't want to, but I'll just show you what happens if I were to change it to something else like that. I can change the size. So I'm going to go back and undo that, leave it at 600, 400. And I click, and you can see it change. Um, but what I want to do here is I want to put a paddle into my world. So if I'm making a Brick Breaker game, um, the first thing I want is to make a paddle so that I have a paddle at the bottom of the screen that's going to you know, hit the ball up in the air. Um, to do that, I want to add an actor. Now I'm going to right click and I'm going to go new subclass and here's where I'm going to make a paddle class and I'll talk a little more later about classes and what exactly they are and I want to have an image for my paddle and if I go through all of the kind of built-in images in Greenfoot I'm not going to find what I want there's not a paddle image so I'm going to show you a little hack um, I'm going to open up a Chrome window and I've done a search just for green and I'm going to get an area that's green. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a screenshot. So I'm going to hold down a couple of keys here on my Mac. And I'm just taking a screenshot. Um, in my case, since my stage is, you know, 400 wide, I don't want my paddle to be too wide. So maybe, you know, 75. Sure, that's kind of, that's okay. And uh, I can always resize this a little bit later, but... Right there, that's a pretty good screenshot, so I'll stop. There we go, picture is taken, I can see it right down here. And I'm going to import that here. Um, 
as the image that goes along with the paddle. So if I go import from library, I can see right on the desktop there, there's the screenshot I took. It's got a weird file name, but I can, I can rename it if I want to. Uh, it's not necessary, but I'll call it paddle image like that. <clears throat> and now if I hit OK, you can see over here I have a paddle actor and it has this image associated with it. So I hold down shift and you can see I get a paddle on the screen. Wonderful. And if I click, I can put it on the screen. Now that's one thing. If I reset right now, I have to actually go click, hold down shift, click, and put the paddle in the world every time. I don't want to do that. I just want it to appear on the screen automatically. So I'll show you how to do that. You go into my world, and right underneath the super line, so the code is always executed top down. So the first thing we want to happen is we want the world to be created. We want it to be 600 by 400. And right after that, we want to add an object to the screen. And that's going to be a new paddle. And we want it to live. Next, we're going to give it the coordinates. So the coordinates are going to be 300 comma, and let's just see what happens if we put it at 200. So if I do that, notice that 300 is half of 600, and 200 is half of 400. So this paddle is going to appear right in the middle. Now that's not where I want it, so I'm going to change this number here to be 350. And what that's telling the computer is don't put it 200 pixels down, put it 350 pixels down, so now my paddle, the middle of my paddle, is 300 over and 350 down. So in computer world, this is always 0, 0, the top left corner. And so 600 would be here in the x direction, and 400 would be here in the y. Just be aware of your positioning. So we've got a paddle on the screen. That's great. Now we want to make it so that the paddle is going to move based on key control. So I go into the paddle now, not the world. I'm going to go into the paddle. And I see the paddle has this thing called an act method. And this act method is going to happen over and over and over again while the game is running. So whatever I put in here, see how it says add your action code here? Whatever I put in here is going to happen again and again and again. So I want to put some code that's going to continually look for a key press and then respond in a certain way. So here's how I'm going to do that. I'm going to say if, and then in brackets, greenfoot dot is key down. And by the way, after I put greenfoot dot, I can hit control space. <clears throat> and these are all of the different things that I can do with the greenfoot library. I can look for mouse movement. I can play a sound. I can do lots of different things. What I want to do here is just check to see if a key has been pressed. And I want to look for the left key. And notice I put it in double quotes. Okay, And my brackets must balance. So I have an open bracket here, closed bracket here, open bracket here. I've got to include a closed bracket. So if someone hits the left key, I want the paddle to move to the left. So remember we were talking about x and y coordinates? Well, there are some methods that will get the x coordinate, and there's another method that will get the y coordinate. And what I want to do is I want to use another method. I'll show you how we're going to put this all together in one second, called set location. Because what I want to do is I want to set the location of the paddle. Now, how do I want to set the location? There's going to be two coordinates. Now, if I want the y coordinate, to stay the same, all I'm going to do is get the current y coordinate. So I'm just going to move that there. I'm going to get the current y coordinate and I'm not going to change it. But if I want the x to move, I'm going to get the current x coordinate and I'm going to add to, or sorry, subtract from it. Now this is a relatively confusing line for people at first, but what's happening is we are setting the location of the paddle to whatever the current x position is, and then we're subtracting 5. 
So what that's going to do is it's going to make the paddle move 5 this way. And it's going to keep going that way 5 pixels at a time. The Y coordinate is not going to change. So we're setting the location to the current X coordinate minus 5 and whatever the current Y coordinate is. We are going to do the same thing to make it go to the right. The only difference being instead of subtracting 5, we're going to add 5. So now if I go back to the world and I hit left or right, <clears throat> it's not going to work yet because I have to run it. So if I run the code and I press the left button, it's working. I press the right button, it's working. So now I have a paddle at the bottom of the screen that's going left and right. And that's a good place to stop for the first tutorial. Uh, next up, we'll learn how to make a ball bounce around the screen.